so I have to ask you a question, so you speak more. Um, <laughs> so I was interested in your uh, you bringing up no authors. I would say more authors. Um, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you really get rid of the author, and what is the consequence for you? Other than that, life becomes apparently more. On simple artist life. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting on two on two levels. It's interesting for the for the pe for people who create content who who are dealing with content in on a on a creative level, um, because you're not restrained from anything. So basically, anything is is open to you and and, and accessible. And I had this experience. I'm I was in the last years a lot in China, and I'm teaching at an art uh, university in China now. And for when you speak to people outside, I would say outside of the Western world, for them this this question of author and of uh, of copyright anyway, it's 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 ununderstandable, like culturally deeply ununderstandable. It's like what. What are you protecting? And they know what World uh, uh, Trade Organization is, and that they sort of the state had to comply. But people are, you know, it has nothing to do with yes, we are stealing your content, and then we are making money from it. No, it's much more like what? What do you mean? It's a digital file. You copy it in five seconds. What did I steal? It's, it's not your bicycle. That we understand. If you <laughs> your bicycle, but this is just sharing ideas, and you are making something else out of it. So all this. All this um, mechanism might lead to, or le met, maybe let's say, uh, to lower the the thing that we have, which is, uh, I, I'm sure you, you also know that the, this authorship uh, question, it is dealt with legally, also very different in, in the United States than in, than in Europe. So if to, for me, all this is such a headache that I, I, that I kind of, it was, it was the, the most uh, relaxing thing to, to think of. But we know, on the other hand, so I'm always contradicting myself, obviously, because I'm also living in this world. Yes, I am. Um, when, we, when we act as authors, it's always going through uh, our name, our, um, that's, our, that's all we have, ultimately. You know, we can be a group, we can be a single player, but it is, okay, who is this guy who is invited, who is speaking? It's always, that's attached to your name, to my name. Um, it would be great if that would be less um, bound to a market value. Maybe that's more the question. Maybe that's an interesting question, though, because I think Femke uh, brought up with the issue of um, approaching, well, let's say abandoning property or abandoning authorship, or <laughs> both or neither, from um, a possibly decolonial perspective, that um, if you would, uh, just in the present moment, perhaps um, start from this standpoint, that would it be possible through that approach to still address uh, inequalities in things like property or who could be recognized as an authorship and like literally until the, the present day? You mean through the uh, abandoning of mm. authorship altogether? Yeah. No, this, is, yeah. this is my question. I mean, like f coming, of course, first from feminist critique of Bart saying the death of the author, but then let's say, what does it mean to speak as a non, as a dead author? Uh, <laughs> um, so these are questions. I mean, it's not, it's not either or. I think. Um, I think it's important that to shift the way authorship works in the law. <laughs> Um, and that copyright doesn't work is very clear. I mean, mm. um, and, and it's, it's not already using. We are using already the term, always the terms of the sort of imposed other side. That is terrible already. Yeah, we, we should stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we should. Yeah, it's but even in yeah. our critique, we should. We need to be careful not to base the critique on the terms that are being proposed to us. So this is the difficult exercise of uh, somehow. Uh, unlinking the critique from the system that we're trying to critique, uh, that really pulls, and I think that's the lesson, f uh, we, the painful lesson we see 20 years after mm -hmm. the invention of the legal hack of, of copyleft, is that it, it keeps pulling it back to the regime it was 
well, partially trying to critique. It was also trying to find solutions for very mundane problems. Yeah, but the problem with Creative Commons is that it's also this kind of a copyright light, and it cannot be reinforced, so it is basically That's senseless, I would, <laughs> I, I, would, I would argue. I wanted to just short answer to your question about uh, sort of post-colonial content. Um, so the, since it's a music conference, uh, there is the, are these cases now in Berlin with this Humboldt Forum and this, and this terrible nationalistic racist museum that is being built there with the, with the um, stolen content of uh, the colonial past. Uh, and there's a, they have a very famous um, music sound collection and the question there is uh, actually now very much pressing because the rights of these recordings are with the person that recorded that. So there were these Germans and these colonizers at the early, like 100 years ago or 110 years ago with the first recording devices going to other countries, but also bringing these people, for example, music from Indonesia, people would, would perform in, this, in the zoo, actually next to the apes in Berlin. And this was recorded. And so who has the rights for this recording is the people who record it. And then they made recordings of uh, war chrisma, prisoners, uh, prisoners in, the, uh, in the First World War. And they said, yeah, this is, this is research of dialects. And you can see in the photographs how scared these people were. And then in Namibia also. So it's always, the rights are always with the, with the uh, recording entity and not the people who are recorded. And there you can already see. So now they're saying, yes, but um, we can't do much about it. We can just uh, also give uh, a recording back. And so then you have these images in the newspapers where some hard drive is given to some people in Africa. You know, that's like, OK, again. So this doesn't solve anything, obviously. Um, but if we say it, we have to, we have to uh, dissolve the author's right of the recorder, of the person that recorded it, I would say this is the most obvious um, uh, demand in that situation. But I mean, then the question is, uh, is if the price is that then the the person or group or instrument recorded loses its authorship as a result, which is, I think, the move uh, the the big platforms are trying to make is is to resolve authorship as a, as a, as a, as a practice uh, to be able to circulate mm. uh, goods faster. And I think that's something I would like to at least think about, have some resistance. But uh, I, I suppose it also um, p kind of maybe privileges an idea of, um, or privileges somehow the distinction between creation of content and um, creation of the means of experiencing or distributing or, or storing or archiving this content. I mean, I noticed, for example, Christian, you, you, you made a point about the, um, the AI uh, performance of, of music, uh, composition of music also, I think, as um, a way of totally um, re rejecting authorship. But I, I was wondering, Femke, whether you can kind of complicate that <laughs> idea. <laughs> There's a beautiful story of a, of a long discussion in the um, in the people that do the um, the standards for let's say bibli bibliographic re records, um, and the BBC archive had a lar large collection of uh, foghorns. You know, like the things on the coast that do, do like boo, <laughs> so that ships know what the distance is to the coast, and and the discussion was obviously like okay, but but who are we going to put in the author field here? Is this the producer of the machine, the the recorder of the sound, the uh, I don't know wh where where is it <laughs> the BBC? Uh, uh, and they, I think they they found like some kind of solution. But obviously, um, author practice is not limited to uh, certain humans. Uh, not to humans. Mm -hmm. um, there's many forms of authorship, and I think that's why it's I important and interesting to think about these things now, because it's very clear that uh, AI. Pr uh, there's very different kinds that have different forms of authorship, and uh, so how like, how can we think about that interestingly, and not by erasing it, because then it becomes also very difficult to talk about what they do. 
um, and how they uh, are part of that that production. Why? Um, because I think if you, I mean, f from my w and Constant's work, it's um, by somehow being able to uh, converse with the the objects and agencies that are involved in in producing a content, you can start to understand what power relations are around it and how also you could maybe make something else. And so, um, however troubled I am with the current copyright uh, situation and regime, which I have no, let's say, uh, sentiments for keeping alive, I am interested in how what does it mean to be an author. And how does it? What does it mean to be uh, authors in collectivity with uh, machines, stones, and uh, other people? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm th that's <laughs> fair enough. Right. <laughs> um, fantastic. Um, should we maybe move on to the uh, next uh, pairing? Um, although I do think, yeah, many. Fascinating discussions brought up here. Actually, if I can just we ask have one. More, we have more, you know, we have more to talk about. But let's ask. Sure. Actually, I would ask one last question, maybe, um, which I think is kind of. Um, um, I, I've been reading a lot about copyright and authorship <laughs> uh, for the past um, few months, and um, I think there's there's one notion I think that that is quite um, uh, interesting that has come up a lot. Um, which is uh, the comparison of um, authorship, or you could say um, production as an author to um, reproduction as a human being, um, and the shifting ideas about also whether, for example, um, a child is property, or whether a family, whether a, a wife is property, or whether obviously a slave is property in relation to the. Um, income that can be extracted from this this thing. Um, and I was curious how um, maybe that idea of <laughs> authorship, not necessarily from like a genetic perspective, but somehow a kind of mix of like stewardship, um, uh, a relationality, like ancestry, uh, but also control um, and uh, rights to the profit that the thing makes relates to uh, evolving notion of of authorship today. <laughs> In two words, <laughs> no, that cannot be done. But uh, no, I think it's it's again like to try uh, to uh, take apart authorship from a, a linear relation to property, as in in financial, uh, let's say, uh, value as as a financial. Um, measurement uh, if you think about authorship as something that is somehow genealogy uh, but there can be a genealogy of ideas or of of responsibilities or yeah different types of relations then it starts to be interesting to think about then how does the law that we write or work with somehow represent that and this is why I was interested in the two examples that they 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 decenter the question of what can be done with what is being uh, authored to a much larger question of interdependence. And I think that's that's the way to go. How to do that, um, I would like to read with you. And uh, yeah, it's, I think something that we need to think about and write about and uh, try to also make licenses for even if they're performative or artistic uh, products, but I think it's important to imagine what types of law we can make, because that's, I think law is not something that is fixed. It's not something that, that is there to stay forever. It's something that can be changed, and I think that's important work to do. There's often this, uh, is it working? It is working. Uh, a search, uh, a solution for all, for licenses. 
um, which I think the practice is always set, situated. So how actually to create a diversity of licenses that takes into account the situatedness of practices, I think. Because often the license seems to still look just like copyright uh, for a solution for all. So there I have a question. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, let's say the sadness of seeing the proliferation of propo license proposals in around the 2000s and to see that uh, boil down to one, two, or maybe three proposals, uh, I think that's really a, a pity. So yes, I think mm, not just more authors, but also more licenses. <laughs> um, although there is, of course, and this is the complicated, let's say, dimension problem, uh, but also interesting, is how to do licenses that are not about my license, that are somehow I in between a future use and that what I can somehow uh, take responsibility for. And that is that means that there's going to be clusters of of yeah, proposals that somehow can deal with clustered situations. And then how to make the cut between uh, different situations. That is, of course, the... I mean, that's the question of today, no? How to, how to act situated in a situated way without uh, isolating yourself from uh, problems and issues you, can, you, you, you might not be aware of or you, you're not able to take responsibility for. So... To, do that work in a legal sense, I think, is uh, is urgent. <laughs> I just wanted to, uh, one th thought that kind of slipped uh, through when you were saying um, we have to have something like that because otherwise these content, um, um, content um, spreading companies like Google or Facebook or Twitter are um, taking all the money from our content. This could be regulated in a totally different way by, by, by kind of um, um, deprivatizing these companies. I would totally be uh, in for that, obviously. Um, and or, 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 or uh, um, tax them in a much better way and distribute this money in another way. I think this is not automatically um, bound to this type of new technologies that are um, not creating content but distributing content and making too much money out of that. This, for that, we don't. We also don't need necessarily a strong position of the author because that we can see that it does. That doesn't work. It just doesn't. This is already now for t 10, 15 years. It doesn't work. Why should it work tomorrow? It doesn't work with this with these stupid laws from the European Union. Either. But but you do it again, which is to equate author rights with copyright for money. And this, like, my only thing against uh, the Google of Google's of this world dissolving copyright would be uh, that we would lose uh, the possibility to have law that somehow intelligently thinks with us on how author practices can can flourish. Yes, but the author was invented. It, the, the notion of the author was invented with capitalism, and it was used in exactly this way. I cannot separate that. Mm -hmm. if I think, from like historically speaking, with these laws of Anne or how, how it was called in England mm -hmm. for the first book publishing, this notion of the author that is co that that is connected to copyright. This is like hundreds of years old. This notion, and until today, this is the th the thing we talk about. Mm -hmm. And so. I said what I said. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.